Hey, it's Jake from The Verge, and we have Nokia's re-released Matrix phone. They have updated the classic phone from the 90s, the slider, the banana phone, for 2018. It now has LTE, it has a larger screen, but otherwise it's pretty much the same form factor. This shape is pretty ridiculous in 2018, but it works. There is a ton of nostalgia here, and having wanted one ever since I saw The Matrix, I love the fact that HMD Global, which now makes Nokia phones, is bringing it back. I think they're entirely relying on that nostalgia for this thing to sell, but I absolutely don't care. I buy into it in this case. The device is gonna sell for under $100, and basically HMD says that there is still over a billion people who are using feature phones, and they think that through some combination of you know, nostalgia, Nokia's recognizable brand name, and just being one of the few people still making decent feature phones, it can actually get some people to buy this thing. So obviously the big deal here is the design. It has this curved shape on the outside, which is part of what gives it the banana phone nickname. Also, it comes in yellow, as well as a black color. There is a headphone jack on top, charges over micro USB, and there's a two megapixel camera on back. I've already taken a photo with it, and I can tell you it is terrible. The slider is not exactly great, but it's not about whether it's good or bad. It's about the fact that it was in the Matrix 20 years ago. And you know what? That is probably enough. You have to use a directional pad to navigate the interface. You have to use T9 to type. And I have to say, going back after a decade on smartphones is a real wake-up call as to how not great that experience was. It's kind of usable if you're just navigating the menus, but the buttons are really tiny and hard to use. It's hard to quickly get around the interface. You can actually get into a web browser here and navigate things. Uh, you'll control a cursor with the D-pad. So even though you can't get Android apps, there is still an app store, and Nokia has partnered with a bunch of companies to fill it with some popular apps. So there's gonna be Twitter, there's gonna be Facebook, there's even gonna be a whole suite of Google apps, including the Google Assistant. We're not really sure what that experience is going to be like, but the intention really seems to be bridging the gap between a feature phone and a smartphone by offering at least some of the functionality. There is a two megapixel camera on the back of this thing, and I have to tell you, it is really not good. It is exactly like the last time you used a feature phone. Everything is just big, blocky, chunky, pixelated mess. I guess it's there because it has to be, but don't take pictures with this and expect much. And of course, this is a Nokia phone, and so there's Snake. I have to tell you, I've accidentally launched Snake five times while filming this video. It takes a lot of work to quit Snake. This phone also has LTE, and while that might seem kind of useless on a feature phone, it can also be used as a hotspot, which I guess would be a little bit more handy. That's also gonna allow it to work on more cell networks around the world and this one is actually destined for Europe. You're gonna be able to buy it in May for 79 euros. There's also going to be a dual SIM model, which will probably cost a little bit more. Thanks for watching. For more, check out TheVerge.com and be sure to subscribe at youtube.com slash TheVerge. Mm, what if I didn't? I, what if I just described the scene in detail based on memory? Okay, so first, 